Okay, post breakfast session of painting here. We can continue where we left off last time. And we're going to take three of those. Better make it four of those tufts. Okay. And we'll take four of these as well. Mixtures of gamers grass and lead bears tufts from us lead bears tufts from Australia. So we have Portugal and Australia represented in the ground coverage here. Okay. This out of the way. Make sure I didn't I was diligent in my duties. Okay, cool. The picture's not back outwards or mirror imaged. Be the correct terminology for that. Okay, let's um, let's get the old Elmer's glue out here. All right. Uh, I'm gonna need more now. I think. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. Let's take a good look at this. Get a mental beverage. All right, so these are the two finished bases of the of the skirmishers, the Saloy of this army, and we're not going to do these two. So let's just pick one of them and see if there's anything that I would rather it be covered up than people actually see, okay? And that's just imperfections that you might see. Where's my, um, where's my tweets right here? Let's find that. Imperfections that I would rather be not so readily. Because what'll happen is, is you'll put that goop down, but there's some parts where it recedes and yet that's visible. So, you know, it's just one of those things. You might as well take the opportunity now to, to cover that up a little bit. I think we're going to put one back here. Now, these are self-adhesive, and it looks like they're more self-adhesive than others. But I'm still going to put some of this white glue down here to kind of hold them together. I don't want any surprises. Any surprise, surprise. Where are my tweezers? They're right here in front of me. Durr. Okay, we're going to put that on there, and then we'll take the tips and press them in, in some. Okay, that's the brighter green one. And then we got another brighter green one that maybe could go up here. So let's go ahead and do that. Because this is an arable army, but based on the part of the world that they're at, right, rightly or wrongly, I like to give them an arid look. They do come from the desert. They're desert nomads that got that settled in in Mesopotamia. So, you know, is this after they've set up their civilizations or are they way out of the desert? You know, well, you too can decide. <laughs> we need a little bit more glue than that, I think, on this spot. You too can decide what their fluff background story is of these guys. So now stay down. No, it's not wanting to stay down. Maybe we'll do some, some different fun stuff next instead of rolling into the fast blade. I feel like doing some different fun stuff next.
related to this army. Okay, so that's those two. Now, I wouldn't mind putting one of these here. I think I'm going to do that. And you can cut these to different sizes and make them a little smaller. I'm just, I just happen to be fine with the size that these are right here. They perfectly see, they seem perfectly reasonable. got in habit of putting them on there. And this basing material is still kind of mushy, which I don't mind because it means you can push these tufts into the material and it'll give it a bit even a bigger grip. I actually never had one come off of the stand, so that's probably a good thing and, um, and so forth. So, okay. So there you have it. Now, if it bothers you too much that some of these strands pick, you can just pull them off um, like so. Well, don't take the whole thing with you. This one's being a little incorrigible. I noticed that. Oh, let's see what we got for commentary. Morning, bases look excellent. Mr. Ian, Mr. White. Big H, white. Thank you. I like how they look too. Which ultimately, if you're a painter, you know that's the biggest thing. It doesn't really matter what other people think. You just have to be happy with it. Well, this thing was just opened up out of, for no reason. I'll tell you what, we're gonna set him off to the side. We're gonna use a different one that's a little bit more compact. We see that one's giving us trouble. We'll use it on another stand. Damn, these things are stick sticky. Okay, let's get in there. You know, maybe I need to just put them in here. Let's get away from it. Now let's take the tip of something that's not going to push all the way in. And let's just push it down there. Okay. That's better. All right. Yeah, I think they turned out really well. So the good thing you got to remember is I've got six figures that are exactly the same pose. Um, I've got these four stands I'm going to have, and there's literally only two different figures in them. So I got to make them look interesting. And I think that I'm really happy with the way these, let's take these guys out of it, these battle sarongs, as someone mentioned, turned out. You know, they're just a minimum of colorfulness. You know, these guys aren't rich nobles, otherwise they'd be riding a chariot or something. You know, they're just people that just came from the desert and decided to, they wanted to conquer folks, or they were told, it's either them or you. <laughs> All right. Um, this is a spot I wouldn't mind covering over. How are we looking with that big tuft? I may just... I may pick another, I may pick a different one. Let me grab a different one that didn't stretch out too much. Okay. 
is actually one of the things I was looking forward to going to the last store kind of picking up more of these little tufts to mix things up. So that definitely a, a nice gift by Mr. Kelleher because I was low on I didn't have the opportunity to do that. And you can't just buy things online without seeing them because the colors look different online. Same thing with paint. Unless you're rebuying a paint you already have. This one feels weird. Let's use this one. This one's a little bit more bouncy. Unless you're rebuying colors, you can't really get a good idea of what the color is going to look like. In my opinion. So I'm not a fan of meal ordering paints sight unseen on the internet. Okay, it's the one under this one, so we've got that one there. And there's a gloppy in that same position over on the other one. So let's mix it up a little bit. Let's put it back here. Okay. I don't, I don't have to put, well, let's just stick with one brush. Don't, I don't, why don't we? Um, I don't have to use them all, but this is an arable army, so... I don't want them to look completely arid. Man, these tufts are, have a mind of their own. I'm going to have to come up with some different methodology using these as opposed to the other ones that I've used all along. I'm going to need to place them about where I want them. Let go. Get this thing out of the way so it doesn't stick to it. And then take the back of one take the back of one of these and press it down. Okay. All right, now we've got uh, the ones on the front. Um, we're definitely going to put one I'm definitely going to put one say here. I don't need them equidistant from everything. Just some variety. So it looks like the bottom of the of the lead bear tufts is a lot stickier than everybody else's. So that's good. However, it sticks to whatever it is that I'm using to push it down into. And that's not good. So I just now that I know that, I need to take appropriate action. make it dissimilar. Up until now, I've made my own tufts on the base. Interesting. I have no idea how you'd do that. I got to sub some of it of some of my workout, or I wouldn't get anything done. Here we go. Here they are. A third of the army done. Four stands. Amorites. So this is exactly like my Irish. My Irish figures, my carriage figures, very boring. I thought they weren't going to be exciting. But hell, I've got two different poses here. And there's enough variety there to uh, make them look varied in appearance. So all Essex miniatures. So. All 
Okay, I promised I was going to do something fun, so I've got to, I got to pay the piper now. We're going to go into my static grass in bundles. Wow. Pushed into white glue blobs. Yeah, sub that out. These other guys are better at this stuff. So, okay. We're going to go do the fun stuff, which is, of course, going into lead mountain. So, I just set up. This is a tote I have of all of my stuff. Oh my god. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> this is absurd. This is absurd. This weighs I don't know how much this thing weighs. I should I should weigh it. Probably close to eighty pounds, hundred pounds. 15 millimeter lead. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here. I have a bag that's all of my Arab stuff. And I also have a bag that has my Assyrian stuff. And I need to get both of those. The reason I need to get the Assyrian one is the Assyrian one, I had bought some Essex hordes figures. So they also get used for this army. Don't think I'm gonna get around to finishing them in time to use these guys in a game. And then I want the the Arab armies because there's camels and stuff in there. So, yeah, this is extremely heavy. Um, I should weigh how much it is, but, and this isn't all the lead I have. Lovely. Uh, who fell down? All right, first of all, who's this? This is Spanish, Normans, etc. I'm gonna have to put this down. This is why I don't get another other stuff. I got plenty of this stuff. All right, it's my feudal Spanish stuff. All right, what's this? This is what is this? Is this part of my medieval things. Okay. I see norms and such. Okay, not there. This big old bag. late European stuff. What's here? Ottomans. What's here? Late medievals. What's here? They're towards the bottom. The Assyrians are definitely towards the bottom. I just don't want to overshoot them and look for them twice. Late Europeans. This is more late Europeans, including Poles. There's Poles in here. Late start today? No, this is the second video, man. Late start for you. We have to go to breakfast at Kiki's at 7.30. This is more nice. So what do we got here? These are the... Crusaders, Byzantines. Byzantines, yeah. This is the smallest world of different things. That's not fair. So here's some Arabs. This is the other Arab bag. We need to keep going. These are like Germans. Odds and ends. Goths. It's actually labeled. So we 
ancient Armenians. Late Romans. Mongols and Mongoloids. More Germans. Like Renaissance Germans. Here's the Assyrian bag. Perfect. I could have got everything in the bag. Now, what was in here? Oh, other arrows. All right, so this is the stuff that we're going to sort through. Put all these guys back. Well, let's play. People with these other figures. Chris on miniatures and this is other figures. I just don't need to buy them. I mean, I'll buy a pack here, a pack there to supplement what I have, but I like the I like the stuff I have left to build. It's not like I don't like the figures that I have. I gotta buy different ones. I like what I have. Alright, let's break my back. Putting a flea market. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, so this is what you missed out, Joe. Amorite's done. Too fast auxilia, too soloi so far. We got the fast blade up next. All right. Let's go in the Assyrian thing. This is the Assyrian army that I have. Book one. 51, later Sargonid. So, I'm probably going to do another book one army. This has been a positive experience so far. I just painted two stands with only using two different figure models, and it turned out just fine. I'm really happy with how it turned out, honestly. These are the hordes that I have already. This army can have two solid hordes. These are the the Biblical Horde figures by Essex. They're code BS-126. So we're going to go ahead and pull these guys out. I didn't buy them when I bought the, the, the Amorites because I knew I had them. So I should have two bags of them if I remember correctly. And I do. Actually, I got more than that. I got a 126 and a 127. Right, let's, let's pull both of them out. And we're going to keep the Assyrians nearby. Not because I'm going to do them next, because I'm not. Oh man, I poured out of there. Oh well, I'll just put them back in there. This whole army is basically museum figures. There's a company called Colonial Connection. Not around anymore. They were in Pennsylvania. It, they were a vendor at the first... Historicon I went to 2006. They were selling figures by the each. You got all museum figures. He was selling them individually. So I'd go in and I'd buy two of these, whatever. He was selling them by the each. And I forget how much he was selling them. But the next year he came back and he was he discounted them in half again. So it was like 35 cents a mounted and 17 cents a foot or something like that the second time around. So I bought like Mongols, Assyrians, um, all kinds of stuff from him. Some of the Germans that I painted up. I got all kinds of things. I should have gotten more. But I wouldn't have painted them, so maybe I shouldn't have. And um, um, they went out of business. But at the, at the time, he was like, yeah, you can order them directly from me, but he wouldn't take debit card or credit card. He'd had to mail them a check. And I'm like, no. Even in 2006, I'm not dealing with checks. Okay? So... 
Anyhow, um, okay, I think this is fast auxilia for the Assyrians. So we can go ahead and put these guys back in the, in the bed. These are the horde, these are the horde figures. We'll take a look at them in a, in a moment. We'll keep these Assyrians close. Okay, and then we need to look at the Arab bag because in the Arab bag, I've got some baggage camels, which is what I'm gonna use for this army as their camp and also as a baggage element so we can do a collision course with them. All right. These are North African stuff. Oh, this is the um, Zanj Revolt Army that I put together. I actually had somebody comment on one of my games that the Zanj Revolt Army seemed like a really crappy army. So I took them up on the, I, well, I'm gonna build them one time and they're gonna win some games for me. Let's just take this stuff and pull it out. Ooh, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. We're looking for baggage camels. I, I, gotta, I gotta lose the glasses completely. Alright, no, no. I love these Arab figures. There's some really cool Arab figures. Okay, that's a horse. I'll put the horse there. All right, here's a baggage camel already. And I'm not sure who the manufacturer is of this. On the bottom it says... On the bottom it says... S-M-L-A-C. But here's a camel with baggage on him. So set him off to the side. This is why you grab stuff at flea markets, because you never know when you're going to need it. And it's basically, see, here's a, here's a camel with stuff on it. All kinds of stuff on there. That'd make a good baggage element. Set him off to the side. in the camel but he's all covered in stuff so he's Tuareg looking we're not going to use him in this army here's a horse with a Rome some Roman shields we're not going to use them either that's too period specific here's another baggage ca camel here's another figure that I have no idea who makes this looks kind of a Lawrence of Arabia looking guy but Definitely a cool looking figure. It's a one piece casting. Not sure who makes it. He's in search of an army. We'll use him one day. That may be all I need, what I have there, but I'm just going to look through here since I broke a sweat getting these guys out. So, what I used to do is I used to organize them in in little bags based on the pose so everybody in the same pose would be in the same bag but eventually just got out of hand of these museums I picked these up at the last historic on no the next to the last historic on I went to guy was selling these for a dollar a pack so I think that's how much they were so I've got a Seljuk Turk army to do okay these are all minifigs Tuareg camels now there's some museums in here but which unfortunately are massively large camels. They don't fit on stands. No baggage camels there. More of the same. More of the same. No. These are just horses. This Rum, Sel Rum Seljuk infantry. They got like um, these 
guys that are shaved except one little thing at the top. Pretty cool. Again, an army that's on my to-do list, and then Luke goes and buys a Seljuk Turk army, so they become all of a sudden not very interesting in doing them. Doesn't mean I won't do them, they're just not a priority. Um, I think that's it. I think that's what we got in the baggage camel department. Okay. Well, we're going to lose the horse. We don't need the horse. We don't need somebody on foot leading these guys either. I want these guys to be non-period specific so I could use them specifically for maybe crusades, a crusades baggage element. Also these Amorites or, you know, somebody else that would have access to camels. Now these, uh, these are also Muslim armies. What do we got over here? This is the Assyrians, right? What do we have here? These are some other Arabs, but this is what an army had put together. All right, so we can put this away, and this away, and this away. So I can totally see baggage element. Oh, he's super soft. Whatever alloy he's made out of. some kind of an element with three camels on it or two, just two camels look all right. I don't know, something like that. We're gonna keep, keep. we're gonna keep him around. Let's take a look at these hordes. Let's cancel this notification here. Take a look at these hordes. BS 126. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Now these are units that can use instead of those fast auxilia. So I could use these fast auxilia instead of the solid auxilia guys that I have, and then put these two hordes instead of them. So that's a possibility. Okay, this guy's got like a turban, that got a turban, he's got a helmet. Okay, he's bareheaded and shaved. Another turban dude. Here's bareheaded with, what the hell's he? Oh, he's got like a battle sarong. Okay. This guy's got one of them headbands, like he's working for the weekend. Okay, another one of the same pose, another turban, another one of the same pose. This guy here. This guy is bareheaded and has a stick. This guy is bareheaded and has a stick. This guy's got a sickle sword. Cool, definitely period, definitely the right period for that. He's unique. One of these. So how many of these guys you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we would need uh, three more guys. So the problem with these turban guys is nobody of this time period is wearing turbans yet. No one. No one. Where are we at? 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So two more. And I have exactly two of these same fast auxilia figures left. So I can totally use them in that stand. Now, let me go consult the army book. Make sure I don't leave everything obviously on the table. And this is book 115, Later Amorites. Five fast blade, two auxilia that can be fast or solid, two soloi, two emergency reserves or nomadic levies. And those can be soloi, they can be solid hordes. So I could just use these two auxilia to have as the standard auxilias and then do two solid hordes as well and not do the solid auxilia. Let's see. Well, we're not going to use these guys with the turbans, okay? There's no one in this time period that uses turbans yet. This guy's got a conical type helmet, which I guess somebody could have used. Um, Everybody else looks right, so that's this is what we're going to use as our um, as our horde figures. We're going to go ahead and let's put these in a baggie, and we may do those instead of the solid auxilia because they paint up quick and hordes are cool. I can have some expendable elements for this army. They don't count against you, or we're being a, we're being a fumbler today. Well, I can't see. Can't see the bag. There he is, guy. Okay. So we're gonna throw these guys in the, the bag. These extra figures we're gonna put away with the rest of it. So forth the Syrians. Okay. That was fun. Alright. So we got these guys done. We got the uh, solid hordes we could do as well. I've got the solid auxilia too, which are those cool figures that Joe has that got me buying these guys to begin with. They actually have reed type helmets. Kind of cool. All right, but next. Five. Damn, I have some turban dudes in my Hyksos army. Well, I've never seen anybody wearing a turban during this time period. But, you know, if I have an opportunity, I won't use them. I'll use them for something else. I had enough figures. I mean, I'd use them if I had to. All right. So, as promised... These are 15 figures in three different poses. So here's a pose. These are all, these guys are standing with the weapon down at the bottom, those five. And this guy has the sickle sword separated from his head a little bit. And these guys all have it close to their head. So let's take a look at it and see who our first candidate is gonna be. I think we're going to do these guys here with the sickle swords. Let's move them off to the side. All right, we're going to paint these in batches of five. And remember, these have goat, goat hide shields. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is let's mix up some of that Middle Eastern flesh color. How did those bronze tip weapons look? I don't know if you guys could make them out, but I did a mix between the bronze, the Vallejo bronze and some steel. So if you look at these spear tips here, these javelin tips, they're not straight steel. 
they are, let's see if I can compare, if I have some steel for you guys to see. Um, this guy. Okay. So if you look at this guy here on the end and you compare him to, to this guy, you could see the metal color difference. It's subtle, but it's enough to... Man, I really like how these guys turned out. For being freaking boring, these are, this is a freaking boring army. It looks interesting to play with. There's all kinds of different variations there. I'm really happy with them. So, will I be building another Book One army? You betcha. I'll be playing. No, I'll be building another Book One army for sure. When? Who the fuck knows? We're not going to wait 18 years. How about that? <laughs> and we'll do the Assyrians next since I already have them. How about that? Sargonid Assyrians. We'll do them. So, cool. Yeah. I like them. I like them. Turned out well. We'll have pictures of them up on Facebook later today when the wife's not busy. She can take pictures of them. All right. Off to some fast blade. So these guys are going to look um, similar to the fast auxilia, except they all have shields. The shields will not have a pattern on them. Well, they will have a pattern. They'll have a goat hide type pattern on them. But they won't have, um, you know, they're not going to have heraldry or any symbols. Any, there's no symbols on them, okay? And that's what, I, that's what I was trying to say. All right, let's see how we're doing on the thinner. We've got this one that's got some flakes of stuff in it. Let's just go ahead and empty this out. No, just with a little wipe. This is completely clean. Now, this stuff is amazing. I don't, nothing really sticks to it. If this had been water, there'd be residue and all kinds of stuff. I don't, I don't know. This is like a ma magic juices. So. All right. So, and our plan is, so you're, we're going to have these blades are going to look very similar to this auxilia. It's over here. They're going to have these battle sarongs. Um... They're bare chested. They have no shoes on. But they have sickle swords. So they're going to have that half bronze, half steel type material. If you did all bronze, it just wouldn't look right. I've seen other people do it. It doesn't work for me. You know? And, um, but their shield is going to have some kind of a design on them from the skin of the goat. Now, I'm probably going to do. Um, finishing later, off to do my own basing. Excellent. Have a good day, Ian. Um, that's gonna. I'm. I'm probably going to be doing. You know, um, black, dark gray, light gray, white type patterns on them, so that they're all kind of have that theme. And then my other guys can have the brown colored goat skin type things. But there's enough brown on these guys from their skin tone of being out in the sun. I don't need to add extra brownage to them. They're just going to look like a blob. So I'm going to introduce the gray type thing. Okay. That's what my, that's what the plan is. And I may vary it by adding one here that's not gray or something like that. Just add some variety to it. I don't know yet. That's just kind of my theory behind what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So, uh, all right, let's get some brushes that can be counted on. We got this candidate. This one. You can tell which ones have been used before. I want to grab some of them. This guy can go. Nope, this is the one I just pulled out. This is the one that can go back in storage. Here's another one. And one more, this one right here. You ready to do 
napkin? I think so. Paper towel. Need a little bit more fill in here. I think it's on number two. That just doesn't cut it. Up to five. All right. Let's do some skins here. Now, I guarantee that this stuff is... Looks like the black's okay. This leather brown just isn't cutting it. So let's go ahead and put some more of that stuff down. Now normally I would paint one figure to make sure that I'm in the right neck of the woods. I'm not going to do that. I know that the skin tone, I'm going to be happy with it how it is. I've got lots of examples of it working and happy with how it turned out. So we can move on from there. We don't have to test the waters with, with that. Let's get the biggest brush of these that I have, which is this one. All right, let's grab a figure. Well, let's find a spot we can work on here. Oh, we got too much jewelry on. This came back out. this dark shade like so we're gonna paint everything that's fleshy on this guy all the fleshy bits in this color So this is the boring part where you're just kind of painting everything one color. Any monkey can do that. What that color is, yeah, that might take a little bit of ingenuity, but just the actual painting, pretty much a no-brainer. We're going to go ahead and paint them all individually because if they vary a little bit in skin cone that's a good thing we don't want them to be exa exactly the same so let's get something a little bit more detail oriented and add some more of this color here
So we didn't get disconnected this morning. So knock on wood, that doesn't happen again. If we do, in this video, I won't come back on. It's, uh, I'm going to have to sign off around 1 o'clock anyways. So if we get disconnected and don't go looking for another video this, after, this, uh, this late morning, public service announcement. Marco, welcome. Good morning. Got your boots on yet? <laughs> what is it? Probably. Ten fifteen. Hmm. Just got done with my Marican Byzantines. Ooh, excellent. Need to put a final sealer, then flock bases, but they look mean. Next up is Mongol Samurai, post-Mongol Samurai. Got him on, killed a rattlesnake this morning already. Really? Send me a picture. I think snakes are cool. I don't want them in my house. Um, I think they're neat. They're not gross. The problem with snakes is it's so damn fast and they have no feet. They're all muscle. Closest thing I've come to kill a rattlesnake is I've had to kill a moccasin in my courtyard. And of course, I was wearing shorts and flip flops because it's Florida. So, you know, um, you know, if I'm wearing boots or long pants and shoes and I have some kind of a pole arm, yeah, I could, I don't mind, I don't mind mixing it up with them. But uh, being totally. That's actually the only time I've seen a poisonous snake in Florida. Uh, not true. Not true. I found a coral snake too, but the coral snakes are little. But, yeah, lots of people are freaked out by snakes. We've got, um, you know, the black ones, of course, everywhere. Um, and the last two times I mowed the lawn, there was one of them that was coming up for air. He had his little head. He was looking like I was mowing, and ahead of me, you could see him pop up, and it was just kind of looking around. Cutest thing. And um, then there was another one that was coming out through the, the bushes. And I live in a suburb, so I live in a suburban neighborhood. But, you know, there, I hear there's, a, there's a, a nest of a black racer nest next door or whatever. I don't mind them. Just don't, just don't come in the house, please. You know, you could do whatever you want out there. I'm not scared of them. I think they're cool. Uh, they just startle you because they move so damn fast. Um... But yeah, he was popping out of the hedges and I'm like trimming the hedges. I'm like, man, you better get in there. I don't want to cut you because they get all the goo all over them. You know, I don't, I don't want to kill them and I don't want to, you know, they eat, they eat bugs. So anything that eats bugs is my friend, you know. So sending pick now. I had my pistol with snake shot, but this was a baby. So a shovel did the trick. Recommend shooting them first though. Snake shot. Yeah. I've seen the snake shot in 22. I guess they make it in other calibers. The problem with the poisonous snake, my experience is, is if they're cornered. Is if they're cornered, they're gonna strike. If they can get away, they don't wanna mess with, you know, a full-size individual. This one was between my dogs and sheep. Yeah, you got to do something then. So you're Greek and you have sheep. I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> you have the right attitude. You can laugh about it. <laughs> sheep. My Irish have sheep. My Irish army. Cute little sheep. Um, 
I don't think it's worth eating, though. I don't think lamb's worth eating. I mean, other people can eat it. It's just I don't have a taste for it. You know, I'm kind of, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's built into your your heritage. See, my heritage is pork. We eat the shit out of pork things. There you go. Yeah. You've seen my videos. We make fun of everything. We, we don't. It's funny if you if you listen to the Brits, the people from the UK. It's hilarious. People from England always accuse Welsh, Scots, and Irish of doing that with fornicating with farm animals. It's 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 hilarious, you know. <laughs> I just like to laugh about everything. Back when you could make fun of everything, at the end of the day, we're all friends, you know. It's all good. Yeah, Maurice and Byzantine. That's a cool army. Maurice. Which is a guy, one of those guys got the freaking, got screwed. I don't mean that in a good way. I mean, he got the shaft. Which guy was it? Because I get him mixed up. It might have been Maurice. Because Heraclius came in to save the day. I was reading, was it the Byzantine podcast or something? But the I didn't realize that the Sassanids, during Heraclius' time period, took over Egypt. Maybe it wasn't for a really long time, but they ended up taking all of Egypt over. They had some general that was apparently pretty badass, named something like Shaharbazad or something like that. I can't say it right because his name's not in front of me. This is in the late 500s, I think. Anyhow, he'd, he'd, push the, he'd push the Byzantines all the way out of Egypt. And, um, and Heraclius went the other way and kind of came back around and said, well, you're going to push us out of Egypt. I'm marching on your damn capital. And he did an end around and... Um, and got things back in order. But I want to say Maurice ended up getting screwed. Like he ended up like being kind of a emperor and he got deposed and nose cut just a lot of nose cutting off in um, in uh, in the Byzantines. We eat our sheep and lamb. Ever had pig's trotters? I have not had pig's trotters. I know what they are. No, I I don't want to look at I don't want to recognize it as a living creature what I'm eating. If preference. Maurice did. He was deposed in a coup and blinded. Yeah, he got screwed. Yeah, pig's trotters is uh, ham hocks, I think is what that is. The little, the pig's feet. Yeah, they trot on that. The Byzantine Sassanid meat grinder wars allowed the Arab conquest armies to be successful. It was. It was. Yeah, and what's interesting is both of those armies, I find that the Byzantines and the Sassanids are very interesting looking both very very cool um, unfortunately the Sassanids is one of those armies that isn't represented well in DBA I think the cavalry doesn't really do them justice so um, but what have you I'm glad everybody's back welcome folks interesting conversation about history the kind of stuff you talk about and then when you go offline you look up Wikipedia or what have you but if you guys are familiar with the History of Rome podcast, that was excellent. And the guy took over the history of the Byzantine Empire. And the story is fascinating. But the guy who did it just doesn't work for me as far as um, um, listening to. He's a little too, like, uh, not, not enough energy for me. So, um, but I did make it to about... 800 AD, 900 maybe, I lost interest. I never made it to the Bulgar Slayer. I think I just came short of that. But I should pick it up because if I build a Byzantine army, it's going to be the, um, who are those guys? Uh, 
Manuel. That's my middle name. So that's what I would do. I would do Manuel Camnenas because it's a Byzantine time period and that's when they have the, they've gone to a more impact type cavalry and I've got the figures for that and it fits with all of our, our crusade type armies or whatever. And it's my middle name. So not that I'm named after him. Yeah. Um, got it. Over here. Let's add more of this. But that's the problem is there's so many things I want to build. I can't do them all at once. Although I'm being a lot more productive than I've ever been. Ever. But I just can't get to four armies a year. I think it's three is about maxed out on three. Uh, let's put some of this muscle definition. Definitely like doing that. I'll build the mus. I'll paint the muscles on this guy. I wish I had. <laughs> oh man. Hey, I could have muscles, but I decided to be a painter instead. <laughs> oh, man. That stuff's a lot of work. Byzantines are definitely underrepresented in DBA. I don't see a lot of people with them. Um, and I don't know why. I mean, it's not like they don't make Byzantine figures. It's not like they're co not cool. I was looking around our, air, our local area around here. I actually found two Greek Orthodox churches. And it just in the middle of nowhere, there was like some monastery. There's like some Greek Orthodox monastery. And I'm like, man. Now, we do have a little Greek restaurant here in town. It's just kind of like a, a fast food type place that is freaking spectacular. It's like the best gyro I've ever had in my life. Um, it's not too lammy, not too gamey, their mix, but good the problem is you end up tasting it for a week afterwards and the woman is right off the boat but she's got she's got a frump on her face she must have like she must have married a turk or something like that uh brazilian jujitsu that will get you mus muscles and it's tactical <laughs> like dba uh, i would actually like I, I keep saying this but i'm not i wouldn't make time for it but I would like to do, um, if there was a reasonable place that did it, would do something like Krav Maga. I would like to do that. That would be cool. You know. Do stuff with, you know, rubber guns and stuff like that. That might be cool. But I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not a fan of sparring. Uh, I, it's, it's a little too personal. Um, I don't like that. I don't have the personality for it. I did some martial arts when I was younger, a long time ago, and I didn't like that part of it at all. It's too personal. So. Yeah, but the rubber gun stuff would be cool. Never had good Greek food in the U.S. For good crop. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that's where it's at. Okay. I'll take your word for it. That's going to cut in my painting time. <laughs> Why do martial arts places always smell like bad feet? 
Like, do people just not wash? <laughs> oh, man. Just like the gamers, it's too... I'm too busy gaming to, to shower. Sorry, dude. You're never too busy to shower. You need to have a shower every day. It's good for you. It's good for morale. Right? Not that color. Sunny skin tone. You do rubber gun and knife at my gym. Awesome. I mean, you know, you're probably never going to use it in real life. Might as well make it fun. <laughs> Why not, right? All right, I think we're good with that. Let's add a tiny little bit of sunny skin tone. highlight with this stuff So by doing the same pose over and over again, it forces me to not accidentally paint two guys exactly the same way. It's more of a conscious effort. And at first you think, ah, that's boring. I'm painting the same guy over again, but it's better than having to repaint a guy and making a decision like, oh man, I made two of these guys look the same because I got to mix them up a little bit to give them some kind of a personality. somewhere it's not the United States I'm too much of an ice whore I like ice and everything bad feet smells like victory oh man There's people that are too specialized. You know, like I said the other day, there's one guy that's a lot smarter than I'll ever be. On day one at Historicon, not in the middle of day one, he already smells of B.O. Like, dude, I don't give a shit how smart you are, man. You need to get that under control. I was, I was telling Mitch, next time I go, I'm going to bring these little mini, mini deodorants and hand them out. But maybe they just didn't make deodorant at his size. He wasn't a big dude. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's good to not be so damn intelligent. Common sense always trumps intelligence, you know? One second while I'm thinking about it. Let's see what you got here. 
Oh, he's little. That's the little snake. Cute, though. Now, what's this one? Yeah. Little one. Oh, I like your shirt. That's a cool shirt. Nice. That's a cool shirt. I need one of those. I need a shirt, one of those. My shirt would say Spanish haughtiness. <laughs> oh man, I gotta build a conquistador army. Oh, I gotta build a conquistador army. Be all cocky and shit. I got all the Spanish troops to do them. Just gotta get the natives. Except they'll play really similar to like a Hundred Years War English Army. They got an artillery piece, lots of shooters, a few blade, really similar to, to that. Got some war dogs I can put on the general stand. Gotta have those. Well, there's a reason to do it all right. <laughs> El Dago. <laughs> the shirt is from a gym in Florida. Awesome. Maybe it's a tactic. Biochemical warfare. Shower, even when you're on your own all day. I shower every time before bed. I do. I don't like going to bed dirty. Um, I have psoriasis. Not too bad. Don't look up on the stuff on the internet. It's, it's horrible with the things you see there. But it's pretty other control. I'm not going to complain about it. Um, everybody has something. That's what I got blessed with. But um, So I'll put like cream and stuff on me. So I don't want to have that on me and go to bed with that. I want to get that stuff off and... You know, so yeah, I gotta shower every day, at least once a day, twice if you know I'm all on. You know, uh, the problem with common sense is that you have to deal with all those without it. And that's that's true. That's true. You do need to. Yeah, lots of people freaked out by snakes, just like irrationally terrified, but. There's a lot of people terrified by a lot of stuff these days. I think they're cool. They're just so damn fast. You know, you see something moving and you're not expecting it. And you're like, you know, once your brain processes what it is, like, oh, okay, cool, snake, you know? I'll tell you what. One of my favorite armies of all time is my Athenians. I only got five figures of them done. I got sidetracked. But I think I'm like 13 and 2 with them or something like that. Those guys kick ass completely. Whether or not they like sheep or whatever they're into, on whatever their pastime may be, those guys kick ass when they come to the battlefield. Problem is, Mitch has all the grease you could throw at, you know, so no big incentive in doing them. All right, let's add a little bit of white to this. Brighten this guy's highlights, and of course we're dead. Typical. I don't know what it is about white, but it dries out too much. Yeah, I got to do Belisarius. Not because I love the army list composition, but he just goes with my Ostrogoths. And I really like my Ostrogoths. Let's 
speaking of people that got screwed, I've come close to getting, there's a book, there's a book that's kind of an old book. I think it's called Count Belisarius by author named Graves. And I think it's pretty old, like from the 20s or the 30s. But I think it's kind of a novel of it. And, you know, I did read a novel on Dracula. It doesn't have any of the vampire crap in it. But it has a lot of made up conversations that, that don't even, that didn't happen. And I wasn't really captivated by it. Um, I did finish it, but that's probably, spoiler alert, that's probably who I'm going to do next. I'm probably going to do Vlad's Army next. I got the cute little camp. We got to do that. Spoiler alert. I got impaled people. I got it. Impaled people in a little BUA camp thing. Yeah, I pretty much got to do them. Got to do him next. I was, however, looking to fo forward to ordering a few other figures. Because I got the army in a trade from somebody. Somebody had contacted me and, and they were looking for an army that I had. And then they offered me a trade. Like, well, I'll send you these instead that I don't have a use for. And I'm like, well, that's perfect because they're enemies of my Turks. And I'm always looking for somebody for the Turks to beat on that they have a chance of winning against because they're not going to win against most of their enemies, to be honest with you. They're just not the way the DBA rules are. They're just not very competitive. And But I think the Wallachians would do just fine. Wallachians. Wallachia. But they work with my whole Hungarians. They can use the Hungarians as allies. There's just a lot of ally different options. Ally, the ally option is really nice because it makes, makes you be able to play an army multiple different ways that you normally wouldn't be able to if it was just a straight game. So, almost certainly, that's who's going to be next. So, good stuff are coming. I wonder what's going to, I wonder if anything's ever going to bring back, back the, the price of the international shipping across the pond down to where it was before. I have a feeling it won't. But that's a shame because it made it really easy to, well, as you can see when I've had to deal with those 80 pounds of lead, I don't need any more lead. But, you know, a pack here, a pack there to kind of supplement what I already have for a variety wouldn't be bad. Oh, one a little bit, a little bit more highlight, just a little bit, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Actually, I think the way I handle those auxiliary, I think it worked really well. Just do all the flesh. Okay, I think he's pretty much done. Let's move on to the next guy. Oh, we got some commentationary things here. With your Athenians, did you standardize uniform shields? No. No, I would not. I have 24 hoplite spear bases, many Greek auxilia, and I can compose any of those armies. I figured ancient hoplites, all individualized shield except for Spartans, Thebans. I would go with exactly what you're thinking there. Let me show you. Um, they're not mounted or anything, and they're Zyston figures, and I painted these a long time ago. There's a light cavalry, light horse. Here's another one. 
kind of dusty. Been sitting out here in the. Let's see. These guys you can call, call Saloy because they're Saloy. God, I painted these guys probably over 10 years ago. And I got another one here. Oh, this poor bastard ends up losing his 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 javelin. And then this is the guy I did one hop light. Hand painted the shield, of course. Really like the way this guy turned out. That's all my Athenians so far. But one day I'll get around to doing them. Greek armies can look really tasty. <laughs> Spoken like a Persian. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah. That was before Mitch. And then Mitch came along. He has every freaking Greek army known to man. Or can morph them. Even though his shields are all over the place. And unrealistic. But. I was not going to make generic hoplites. Um. Great detail, loving the new camera. Well, the new internet, is the camera is the same. Yeah, the I do too. This is how it should have always been, damn it. Yeah, you can really, things really stand out okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like how they look. Um, yeah, so Mitch has all those armies, so I'm like, okay, well, there's no point in finishing that. So it was for a Peloponnesian War tournament in 2011. I ran out of time. I ended up borrowing an Athenian army from Rich Goss. He's one of the worst looking armies I've ever had. It was undefeated. They, they couldn't lose a battle. They couldn't lose a battle. So... Well, if I do do a hoplite army, I've already, I'm already a few figures in. <laughs> but, and then I have a Theban army to do too because Mitch ended up winning a tournament and um, it was that army. And he's like, I don't have a use for this. You want it? I said, just paint the camp for me and you can have the army done. So he's got like a palisade type camp from Baweda. And... Um, yeah, painted it up for him. I have the Theban army from Seiston. Beautiful figures. Got to build them just so I can say Epaminondas all the time and do those big eight figure deep spear stands and talk about the sacred band. <laughs> all the fun that you can have. But there's so much to do. Those I would be, yeah, I would paint them very similar uniform. Um, talk about tired of painting those damn Hercules clubs, the clubs of Hercules on the shields. Painted a Theban army this year. Early one museum miniatures. Okay, the next, the next guy. The next guy. All right. This dry out too? Boy, it's a freaking conspiracy. I'm just not putting enough paint down. Oh, it's the fan probably drying everything out. Well, I don't paint in hot weather. Sorry. That's a deal breaker for me. Did them black and white. Yeah, I would probably do stuff like that. You don't... Do you paint the stuff you sculpt... Because whoever painted the stuff you sculpted, it looks really good. It looks, your sculpts look really good. Uh, almost tempting. <laughs> oh. Nah, I just got to paint every day, every other day. If I paint every day, every other day, we'll knock things out. We'll knock things out. And it's, 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 it. It, it's um, 
God, this chair just needs to be... Feels like it's been raped by a sheep or something. It's the creaking from side to side. Damn cheap-ass Chinese office chair. <laughs> um... I can send you some if you like. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. I, I very much appreciate it, but let's not go there. Let's not go there. I had, I have another, I haven't, he hasn't followed me in a while. And there's another guy who ho owns another, he has a company in 28 millimeter. Who is it? Let me think. And he does stuff of, and he's a, he's a caster. I don't think he's the sculptor. But he offered to send me a bunch of stuff for Renaissance period thing. I just didn't take him up on the offer because I know that I don't want people wasting postage and figures. I'm just not going to get around to doing them. It's a shame because I like all of those figures, but I realize that I'm mortal and I have a limited amount of time. I would do them justice, don't get me wrong, but I just wouldn't get anything done. Now, if I decided to do something weird like, you know, say Songs of Blades and Heroes or something like that, yeah, but... I just, I just know me. I, I know that at the end of the day, the reality is, is that I may not play DBA the rest of my life, but I am going to pay a DBA sized game with these figures. Okay. And my time isn't wasted painting them. They will get used and they will be in videos and hopefully, um, uh, excite other folks for the period or the scale or whatever it is so I know that my time isn't wasted doing this and that's kind of what keeps me going I, I could not see with with how much I value my time to do something like Flames of War that all of a sudden someday it's going to die and people aren't going to play it anymore and then all everything I've done with it has been thrown out the window I, I just I, I find that very um depressing so as I used to build scale models I mean the stuff that I did back then was nothing like we do now you know the internet is I think made us all better by comparing sin to other people or seeing what other people do but when you live kind of in a vacuum and you could you only have access to the people that are around you you know um, it's hard to improve significantly, but when you see pe you see these wizards that do these painting jobs that are like, man, this is just amazing. And when you try to dissect what it is that they've done, or you know, you can contact them now and ask them. You know, um, it th I think it makes us all better, and that's just a blessing to be able to live in a time where you can have that. Um, and. You know, I'll say it again. Those of us that paint, I don't care who, you could take the best painter out there. Okay? It's not me. I'm not even close. There's people that, you know, I admire significantly. And they have zero talent compared to some of these people that, 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 that sculpt figures. I'm just in awe about the sculpting, though, the figures thing. It's just, even with my limited amount of working with green stuff, that's like impossible to work with compared to painting. Painting figures is a piece of cake. It's easy. So... First one's free. Don't bother. No, nobody needs to surface the um the thing. <laughs> oh man! I tell you what, though, if I could snap my fingers, and stuff would get done, I would definitely do a fantasy setting based on that Atlantis book that I have. There's so much juicy stuff in there that, um, and I'd I'd make my own rules, my DBA type rules for it. And it would be cool, but, uh, you know, I'd have to be retired, live alone, and be motivated. Maybe if I, like, did motivational drugs, what, what would that be? Like, cocaine? Tony on, single Tony on cocaine retired. Yeah, then maybe we could do it. But, um, yeah, painting figures is easy. It just takes a long time. It's time consuming. There's there's people whose whose painting skills 
I thought have been a lot better than mine. But there's no one whose who's stuff I like better than mine who cut corners. There's no one out there that I'm like, oh, this guy does this, this, and this, and it takes a tenth of the amount of time that I do. No, they're taking just as long as I am. Um, or maybe even longer. So that's at least... Um, comforting that there's not someone out there you know spending 10 minutes on a figure and they come out to be you know a lot better than mine that I like better than mine you don't have to like my stuff the important thing is for me to like my stuff so uh, I know that there's some people out there that are you know whether they kid or not they'll see a picture of something and they'll go man I'm, I'm gonna stop painting because you know that that stuff just looks too good and I find it motivating like okay I know it's a trick it's just it's just a trip. You just got to dissect the process and see what exactly made it happen. But I'm not going to be using contrast paints and dipping things and be happy with the results. So it's just a long, slow therapy. Now, what other people's figures look like, I don't care. As long as you're happy with them, that's all that matters. I have played with some of the ugliest armies ever, and they have kicked total ass. Those Athenians that I talked about, they were all the same color. They were dipped. They didn't even have a command figure. I had to take a piece of tape and tape it around one guy's head just so you, I could tell my opponent what army, who was the general figure, and they were unstoppable. So, you know, better-looking armies don't fight better. <laughs> But um, yeah, the sculpting thing, I'm going to do some other minor sculpting things when I need a special figure or something like that. But yeah, that's, that, that's a total different skill set. Yeah, I love all that pulp BS. Yeah, that, the background story to that is really, really good. And if there was some really good six millimeter stuff, maybe. But that's going to keep me from doing this. And I need to do both. So, you know. But I'll be honest with you. The reason for me to do fantasy is to make my own rules. To maybe iron out some of these things that I don't like in DBA. And then maybe transfer it back into, into a DBA. So kind of like a test bed for it. And, but I want to be doing this that I'm doing right now. I don't necessarily want to be sitting and, you know, trying to figure out how to do weird contacting and combats. And that's just, you know, I don't like doing that alone, you know. Like, if I lived with Mitch, I don't want to do that. But if I did, you know, that would be the kind of stuff you could bounce off each other, you know. Two good armies on field do look impressive. They do. Joe, you're still here. Yes. Mm. Yeah. The game could be better. And I feel like we have at least the experience to be able to do that. But... I don't know if I want to play another game that's tournament based. I'd be more interested in like, okay, kind of like what we've done with some of the historical scenarios, you know, and just build opposing armies or what have you. Build, um, you know. Uh, oh, you've already started on the, you already started on the natives, huh? The natives are restless. Awesome. Those are some really cool figures. Really cool figures. All right, I need to get some more beverage. Be right back, folks.
Yeah, I don't want to do anything that is going to impede my progress on these DBA projects. So, um, at one point I'm like, all right, let's work on the Renaissance rules. I got lots of Renaissance figures. I'll cut down, cut, cut out pieces of cardboard. I can rubber cement them on there and we can try out some rules so that if I build armies for it, I don't base them incorrectly. I'm just not motivated. I'm just not motivated to do that at this point in my life right now. Um, and that will definitely cut down on, I'd be doing that instead of paying these Amorites. You know, so. DBA, Karenia would be cool. I actually know what that is. Which battle? The one with uh, with the Spartans or the one with um, is it Sulla? I think it was Sulla. I think it was Sulla versus one of uh, Mithridates' general. I think so. It wasn't the one with Mithridates, one of his generals. Chaeronea, like 82, 83 BC, something like that. And of course, the other one that's in the 300s. I'm sure you mean the Spartan one. I think it's the Spartans. Post-Mongol Samurai. You mentioned that a little while ago. I need to convert that army to 3.0. Again, I got so many projects. I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to get into other scales or other games. I just it's going to dilute my progress on this, and I feel like my progress on this is slow enough already. Oh, we need a smaller brush than this. Let's, we need to. Here we go. I, I can't dilute the progress here. We got too many things we want to do. Too many things we want to do. Athenians, Macedonians, ah, okay. The one where the tree trophy and all the Mithridatic weapons placed in it. Why does that sound familiar? Hello from Texas, the one where the Spartans wouldn't turn up. <laughs> yeah, Texas, two Texans. A third of the people here are from Texas. I almost ended up living in Texas. My dad took a job at the University of Florida instead of in Sugarland, Texas in 1981. So we ended up here. Studio WGS, welcome from the other side of the world. Ah. From the land of elephant poo. <laughs> oh man, I'm never gonna forget that. That's classic, classic stuff. Classic stuff. I got other Indian. I got I got another Indian army I want to do. I got the elephants to do it. Got some good ideas. I just have just have too many. I just can't get into something else. I just have too many things I, I'm not, that I want to do for this game. 
it just it's just so open ended there's so many cool things so many cool armies there's only like 10 armies I don't want to build out of all the army lists Just too much stuff. Too much stuff that's really interesting. And the fact that we play themed games basically means that any army is fair game. It's not like, well, I don't want to build the the Valakians because they're not very competitive in an open. So don't freaking use them in an open. You know, use them in Wimp Wars or Saloy Silliness or, you know. Uh, fight the enemies of them or you know you don't have to use you know when I started playing DBA that's all there was was opens 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 but you have the same people playing the same four armies over and over again you know play crappy armies with tournaments with armies that are fast and mobile and you know flighty and that kind of stuff those are some great games playing everybody bring their biggest baddest army gets old we usually only have one event that, that is an open tournament when we run them at shows. It's the last event, and that's kind of the the last, your last hurrah is that, that event. On Saturday evening, on the last full day of the show, you get to bring your biggest, baddest, and greatest army. But the rest of the events, yeah, you don't, you know, they're all themed, themed things force you to play armies you wouldn't normally play so you can think outside the box and your gameplay becomes better hopefully and you get to see some armies you don't normally get to see armies with elephants are very tricky to run you're not kidding you gotta make sure the pip gods are on your side I don't like warband. I don't I don't I don't have a lot of confidence how it is. But you could do warband themed things, you know, so that you get, do get to use them. Not like, well, we don't use warband. And we use everything. We use everything. Everything's good. Studio WGS from the land of matchbox cars and Hot Wheels. Awesome. I know I've mentioned this several times, but hopefully you've checked out that 3D bot maker diecast ra ra racing thing. That is an awesome freaking channel. And that guy's all kinds of talent that I'll never be. Well, as far as making videos, okay, he can't paint. Okay, he's not a painter. But his editing power is just... I mean, that's some of the best things out there. Check out, he's got a latest one he's got with, they're doing a demolition derby and it is absolutely amazing. It's amazing that something so simple is so captivating to watch. And um, it's a one man show the way I understand it. He does all the voices and all the editing and all the filming and that's a full time gig, man. I couldn't do that. I'd get, there'd be no painting done. So, that guy's all kinds of awesome for sure. 3D bot maker, one word, on YouTube. He doesn't need he doesn't need me to promote his channel. He's got hundred times more people than I have on here. Maybe even more than that. And Barbies. Oh, didn't know that from Malaysia, huh? Yeah, I think we went through all my my hot, my cars and they were all made in Malaysia. Yeah. Cool stuff.
I'll need to do a. We haven't played in a long time. We haven't played Gaslands in a long time. I need to do a. I need to do a Gaslands car based on my, on my new car. That might be fun. But definitely a lot of. You could do a lot of um, customization on that. Sky's the limit on that too. You could basically just say, well, all I do is build things for gas lines and you have enough to do for the rest of your life. You know? Now, I don't care for their background fluff story. I think it's it doesn't work for me. But it can be whatever you want it to be. That's just just their fluff thing. I don't, I don't particularly care for the the themes. I think it's kind of weak. I think the rules are strong background kind of weak. So just make the background whatever the hell you want it to be. Yeah, I got to catch up on your videos there, uh, WGS. I haven't seen them in a long time. I've been slacking. I'm sorry. Problem is, is I'm not listening to things while I'm painting. I'm creating my own videos. That's that's the big difference. Because I'd put on your videos and I just relax. You got a very relaxing voice. And um, that's what I like to listen to. Let's compare this guy to this one and see if we can stop there. We need to add more. Now, they're a different tone. We'll leave this guy where he is. Okay, two down. Three to go. Yeah, it's really the flesh part that takes forever. Once you get through that done, you can do all the battle sarongs in no time. We're getting geared up to do some Gaslands battle reports. Excellent. Not sure how I'm going to shoot that. I don't either. It's a lot of editing. I'm just afraid of doing it and getting so many things wrong. But I actually have a play mat I've never used. Um, I got it from a company that is still in business, but they no longer make them. And it was like, rather expensive. It was like 60 or 70 bucks, and we've never used it. Thanks, Tony. So do you. And that's why I come to your painting sessions. Absolutely. Don't You don't have to watch what I'm doing. Just have something to listen to. It's kind of like talk radio, but you know, not being political or anything like that. You could just kind of relax and just... Have something to listen to. But I've got this Gaslands playmat. It's like four foot by four foot. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's it's like made out of mouse pad material. And but the company is still in business, but they no longer make them. I guess they didn't sell or they were too much to I don't know. They, they don't make them anymore. I couldn't remember what the name of the company is. And then I found them the other day called Inked Gaming. And um, of course I bought it like three years ago or something like that. I've never done anything with it. But I try to avoid things like that. You know, you buy something with all intentions of doing something and then you end up not doing it. You know, uh, it's like I should have just bought a battle map for DBA. Would have used the living hell out of that thing, right? I may still do that someday, but. Um, but anyhow, figure number three. Bad news about doing all these many figures is I gotta paint 15 before I can put them on stands. And you really don't get an idea of how maybe how happy you are with how they look until you, you get them to this stage to put them on stands and they just look like something totally different. But 
Yeah, I'm digging this darker skin. Maybe it's a little darker than I want it to be. Definitely could work for uh, Indian subcontinent type thing. This is similar to what I did with some of mine. But you know, these guys are these guys have been out in the sun. They're desert nomads. They've been out in the sun their entire life. They're they're bare chested. You know, they're going to have a tan on them. You know, there's no doubt about it. So. I don't want to paint them just a regular European Caucasian type skin tone. They are from the Middle East. They may not be dark skin, but they definitely can tan. So. That's when the whole thing comes together, when it's on the stands. It does. It does. That's when you know you're on the right track. Oh, too wet. Oh, I gotta use the little boys' room. I don't have to. I'll choose to. I'll be right back. since I was a 14, 15 years old, something like that. I had a long ass time. And I thought it was a great venue for a fantasy setting. But it's been out of print for hundred, not hundreds of years, obviously not, you know, 20 years, something like that, maybe even longer. And it's amazing how, you know, something, I just, I don't get things out of print. I don't understand that, you know, how things just go out of print, you know? And um, I was going to buy it again. If you don't know what, I'm, what the hell I'm talking about. For those of you guys that missed that, I've been bringing it with me to work and trying to read, read it little by little at lunchtime, just for yucks. There's a lexicon, Atlas of the Lost World of Atlantis, made by Bard Games. And it's a whole world of different countries and stuff like that. And I think this would be a great setting for... A DBA uh, hot type of setting, you know. You got go by pygmies that ran run 
walk on ostriches, that kind of stuff. So definitely um, fascinating, you know, but I got this probably when I was like 14 or 15 years old and I've thought about doing that, but I can't be everywhere. Maybe I could always experiment, maybe getting some armies and like, see if there's like a quicker way to, to paint. The, I don't know the basing could be any quicker, but I don't know. I always like the daydream. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, that'd be a really good idea. So I'll go through all the process of who I'd get the figures from and who makes the ones that I like and, and that kind of thing. And, and, and then, you know, and then I come done. And, and that's, that's one of the things I do enjoy doing is the, is the, the trying to figure out who makes what figures, who, what manufacturer, what figures I would use for which ones and, and that kind of a thing. That's a lot of people don't like that. I think that's one of the most interesting things of the hobby for myself. Um, surfing figures, as I like to call it. And um, I spent a fair amount of time in the last two weeks just kind of looking like, okay, what I do them in sixes, well, sixes would look good. I'd use standard 15 millimeter bases, but just put more figures on them. Canium, you have that. I think it's a great setting. I think it's a great freaking setting. I think some of the stuff you do would probably fit really well in that too. So, still available. Print on demand. And I think someone has recently reprinted it. I I don't have the other the other things. I think that. Um, I think it's awesome because it's historical fantasy. Um, you know, the world is the world. You can see where there's, in the real world, where there's Arab-like uh, civilizations. There's Arab-like civilizations in this world. There's Asians in the Asian places. I mean, there's a couple of things that are different. You know, you've got, uh, I think France is full of dragons and... And Spain has a bunch of like goblins and stuff in there in the in the center area, but there, there's similarities to it. So it's kind of like doing both. So you know, um, I've, I've, I've tinkered with it. You know, I've, I've I've gone through all the process. But if I did fantasy, I would definitely do that setting because I think it's really cool to do that, and wouldn't worry about doing something that was you know really balanced just almost do like historical scenarios like one of the one of the particular nations is uh the uk or this most similar to the uk is um called avalon and that one supposedly is all knights well you could make a scenario where it's just freaking all knights you know they might only have five stands of them but you know they're really powerful but there's only five stands of them and they got to do something else so you could play these historical fake scenarios where you just turn around and you 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 put on a game and like Mitch and I would play a game and one time I'm playing the Avalon guys and the next time I'm playing, you know, somebody else, you know, and um, you just take turns. That's the way you get around it. You play it twice, you know, so you can play unbalanced scenarios and it'd be okay. It didn't matter, you know, if you played both sides. So I think that would be kind of a cool setting, but it's going to take away from doing this. So similar from Hyboria in some ways. Yeah, there's, um, there's definitely those... Conan type things and you've got elephants in there. I think the people at the upper north, they definitely have mammoths and stuff that they use. So there's there's fantasy elements and then there's historical type stuff as well. So um, I think that's a that's a really interesting interesting setting. So And there's magic, but I guess I prefer fantasy to science fiction. If I had to pick one of the two venues that isn't historical, I prefer fantasy to science fiction. But I don't know, I've been enjoying that little Battletech game on a computer quite a bit. That's pretty cool if you guys haven't checked that out. It's been out a couple years, but recently on like big time sale it's the one by Hairbrain Games I picked that up for like 10 bucks just the core game and it reminds me so much of the board game it's really really well done really well done it's challenging um, 
it's not real time, so you're not like stressed out running from one place to the other. Uh, cool little game. Cool little game. Watched several videos on Dragon Rampant. I'm surprised how few there are, honestly. I played Lion Rampant, and I actually liked the rules quite a bit. I've thought of possibly playing it with um, with the 15 millimeter stands and just count cash casualties. You could do that, but it's just very restrictive as far as this unit can have either six people or 12. It's very restrictive like that. I don't like Star Wars or Star Trek. Okay. And I've never cared for Star Trek, really. I like War of the Worlds. I like War of the Worlds kind of deal. Okay. Star Wars is just out of control now, you know. I wish Disney wouldn't have bought it. it got their grubby hands on everything. I don't know how they I don't know how they get away with having everything like they do. And there's some antitrust uh, regulations or something like that. Not what the government should be doing to keep monopolies from happening, but anyhow. Um, I grew up with Star Wars, so, you know, it's okay. I don't really want to play a Star Wars game. You know, I could fire up Battlefront if I want to do that. The problem with science fiction games is, you know, they're supposedly far in the future. But their shooting ranges are shorter than they are in things now. You know, so you're playing some... I remember we were playing Battletech. Like, those weapons are incredibly inaccurate compared to the weapons that we have now. And it's like, what, this is supposed to be like a couple thousand years in the future? <laughs> 1,500 years in the future, something like that? What happened? You guys forget everything? <laughs> Used to be a huge Star Wars fan. Now I can't stand it. Yeah, well now it's woke Star Wars. The first Star Wars movie I didn't like. I think it was the first one I didn't like. It actually wasn't the prequels. They were okay. Um, and now in retrospect, it's not that bad. Now keep in mind, I pretty much only watched these one time. Um, I just don't like when things are just shoved down your throat. And... Um, you like John Carter, Warlord of Mars. I've only seen 10 minutes of it. I got distracted. I need, to, I need to watch it. Everybody had pretty low expectations of it. I'll go in with a low expectation. See for something else I can get, get out of it. But, um, um, which one was it? What was I saying? The Star Wars. First Star Wars I didn't like. Um. Yeah, the new Star Wars movies suck. But even Rogue One. Now, the te last 10 minutes of Rogue One was awesome. Where they tied it all in. But Rogue One starts. And and I'm fine for things being inclusive. But when it becomes like over the top. Like the little team they assembled. Like you got the white girl. And you got the Hispanic guy. And you got one Chinese guy. And you got a black guy. And one robot. It's like, why can't there be like two Chinese guys? Or three? 
you know it's just too like well, we have to have one of every single thing like how about like you know it's a team and it's all black people or whatever it's just it's not about it's just too forced like you know but remember we want a good movie they just want to you know uh, provide entertainment or whatever but um, yeah I didn't care for that last 10 minutes were awesome though how it tied into the other one that was that was really well thought out but um, and of course the Boba Fett, Fett thing with the Mandalorian that was pretty that, that was pretty decent not every episode was great I did like the scene where he blew away the Jawas and they just vaporized that was pretty cool and uh, and the and the scene with the two stormtroopers arguing uh, at the beginning of one of the episodes, they were arguing. They were on their motorbikes doing the search or whatever, and I, and I really felt like they could have done a lot more with that. And as a matter of fact, that's what I thought with the with this what is it called the Bad Batch? I thought that's what it was going to be. It was going to be a spinoff of that, which that would would have done excellent, you know, with the stormtroopers and why they can't hit the broadside of a barn, um, you know, do humor in it, but. Um, Not the films, not the film, the books. Totally agree, prequels were okay. Film is poor. They're trying too hard to hit all the right buttons. A new Beatles film. Oh, man. Who knows what they're going to do with that. Yeah, Disney has too much. Disney has too much. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of the Marvel stuff. I enjoyed it. I played some of the hero, um, what is it, the Marvel clicks? What's it called? Hero clicks? We played some of that. That's That could be fun if you're not trying to play, you know, win at all costs, collecting, just kind of playing a team. It's entertaining. Um, I, don't, I don't mind superhero movies as long as there's like one superhero. Once you start having like a conglomerate of different things and they all have to share their time, it's just a little too like all over the place. The best superhero thing is still The Boys. The Boys is awesome. It's even better than Deadpool. It's The Boys is awesome. If you guys haven't seen The Boys, go watch The Boys. <laughs> Not with your children. <laughs> Hilarious. Um... Um, yeah, just make entertainment. This whole pushing political things. You know, you're not going to convince me of it. So, you know, it's it falls on deaf ears. So. The Boys is really good. Deadpool's not bad. There's scenes in the, those movies that are just spot on. When the team parachutes out, that, that was hilarious. That was some hilarious shit. And you got to watch it with the right people, the movie theater, which I did. So, the movies suck. Visually cool, occasionally good, mostly mindless action. Bad stories, yeah. Storylines suck for most movies. Grew up with Marvel Comics. Don't like people messing with Stan Lee's creations. Okay? I never, I never did comics. Never did comics. Um... And if you've never played Hero Clicks, it could be a decent game if, if you made some, some of your own modifications. I think it's too predictable who goes next. It gives you too much flexibility. I think if you just randomize, like pull chips out of a thing, like who gets to go next, it could be a decent game. It's fun to laugh about it and, you know. But Marvel movies suck mainly because the villains suck. They just, you know, they don't make proper villains anymore. They like make every, everything gray. Not like, you know, these guys are like freaking bad no matter what. Nah, uh, well, you know, that kind of crap. It just, almost all, mov mo all Marvel movies suffer from that, in my opinion. They just have villains that just aren't proper. Half fast.
But I never got into comic books. Never did. I was already reading World War II stuff by the time I was in my comic book years. So. If it is a well written, it doesn't matter who's playing the part. That's true. Yep. Yeah, I think Disney has too big a share in that entertainment industry. I don't really know how they get away with it. Maybe there isn't anything you could do, but... just seems wrong we keep buying up more and more stuff so need some competition folks gotta keep people honest getting disconnected is a fluke oh shit I said that well at this point if I get disconnected you know we're done we're done here because honestly I probably only have another 15 to 20 more minutes before I gotta go do something so but this has been extremely productive so I'm very much appreciate it Okay, back to DBA question. Which Ptolemaic army do you have? Um, 220B. Uh, so it's the one that would fight the Seleucids at Raphia. You're looking at building one of the last two on the list. Enemy is Marian Roman. So the problem with that list, I think that would be a good game, but they really didn't fight in any battle. It's not well known that, you know, a lot of people build the C list. The D list is like, and like the involved in the civil war with itself with Cleopatra and her brother, and and the Romans sided with, you know, one, and they fought each other, and but there's like no battle where the Romans, or it's not well documented where the Romans and the and the Ptolemaics would fight each other in that late list. Now it's a cool list because it's got a lot of like hordes and stuff like that, but. Um, I have the I have the B list. I have the B list that is not 3.0 compatible. But I built it because I knew that Mitch had the Seleucids. I actually have the troop to, troops to make the Seleucid army, but again, Mitch showed up and, you know, took them away from me. He already has them, so. Um, 
I think that a good matchup against the Romans, against the Polybian Romans, would be the um, the Seleucid army. At um, oh man, Magnesia, one eighty BC. So. Yeah, D is the one I was talking about where they fought the Romans. Uh, you have all three Ptolemaics. Uh, four. All four. Yeah. Hey, Ptolemaic. Yeah. I... Yeah. I built that army because everybody I knew had Seleucids. So I'm like, oh, okay, let's fight against them. And those that's a good matchup. Seleucids versus Ptolemaic. That's a good, that's a good matchup. Successor stuff is awesome. So... Speaking of successors, I could get off my ass and build my, my Pyrrhus army. My favorite, my favorite of the Alexander armies is Pyrrhus. He's a badass. He's, uh, he's my favorite of them all. Um, Marco, didn't know you were on here. And it's interesting the people that find things that they don't eat. And this one thing kept circling around things that you will never eat and this one guy said olives and I'm like holy shit I could subsist on olives I don't have them every day but man and olive oil oh man set me up those green olives holy shit I could just eat my way in them I'd turn into a salt lick though it's as salty as they are man I love that stuff actually I know a lot of people who don't like olives and I don't think much of them. <laughs> Man, I love olives. I want some right now. <laughs> um, and olive oil. Yeah. It lubricated the Roman Empire. Built the Rome, Mary Romy army plus Celt. German, British, for 1.0 years ago. Been updating 3.0 for a while now. Blah, blah. Olives are freaking awesome. They're freaking awesome. Anchovies. Hmm. Anchovies fall into that sardine category. You know, something I would eat a long time ago in the 1980s, but I haven't had them since. I don't know about eating a f fish with all its parts on it. You have a letter. The first century centurion stationed in the Danube wrote to his family. Like in your possession? What did he say? This place sucks. There's no olives. <laughs> Get me out of here. I need my olives, damn it. He said that the people led miserable lives because they grow no olives and press no grapes. No shit. Yeah. I, I don't know about pressing grape. I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge wine fan. Um, part of it is probably because I live in Florida and you can't have room temperature wine here. It would be warm. But uh, I don't have a problem with how it tastes. I just... You know, you can't put ice in it. So, you know, I guess you could if you had sangria or something like that. But I, that doesn't settle well with me. It's too sweet. But uh, I guess I like the idea of wine, but don't really partake in it much. I like everything with ice in it that I drink. I'm always hot. I wouldn't have done well in Roman times. I'd have to spend all my time at the beach. If you're wet, you don't not worry about being hot. All right, this is figure number three. It's just about done. Artichoke hearts. No, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with artichokes. 
I don't have a problem with any vegetables. I didn't like beets as a kid. My dad gave me the ones that are in a can, you know, that stain everything. Magenta. But I'm sure regular beets are fine. I, I'm not scared of vegetables. They're not gross. Vegetables are really clean. Never had a rutabaga before. Probably just fine. The name's probably the worst. Not very attractive. Rutabaga. I would like to eat that rutabaga. <laughs> okay. Let me get a let me get a time check on something. Okay, well, it's going to be a wrap then. We got to go do the other thing that we got to do. So, thanks for hanging out with me, folks. I really appreciate it. And um, we'll catch you guys next time. Happy painting. And um, I leave you with some amorites. Anyhow, more amorites to come. So, okay, folks. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and be well.